Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists with me, Diana O'Carroll. This week we'll have no naysayers. Hi, this is Evil Eye from Mount Dora, Florida in the United States. My question is, why did donkeys hee-haw, horses bray, and what sound do zebras make? So why do these equine animals, which are more or less capable of breeding with each other, make different noises? My name is Alban Le Masson. I am a lecturer in Rennes University in the northwest of France. So to this question, say, I really can't say because there's just a very few work done on equine vocal communications. The only thing we know is from horses. We don't know anything between mules and donkeys or zebras, for instance. My only experience is when I was working in the field, I often listened to zebras, and it sounds like in between mules and horses, something in between. But we really don't know. This has to be studied more systematically. It has something to do with phylogeny and anatomy. Believe it or not, no one has worked on comparing the noises of these animals properly. Alban suggested anatomy may play a role. So let's hear how different these noises are. And here's a horse. A donkey. And a zebra. There is a sort of similarity between them all, with both the zebra and the donkey doing that sort of hiccup with their braying. Now, donkeys and zebras are thought to be more closely related, so it could be something the modern horse hasn't inherited. Or they might differ because of the social organisation of their species. Horses actually have a number of different calls, as Alban describes. They have a very small vocal repertoire of a few calls, and one call is particularly interesting. It's the weenie call that we have studied more intensively. And this is a particular call that they often produce when they are far from each other. So it's a kind of long distance contact call. So in order to be sure that this has a social function, we study the acoustic structures of Winnie calls to see if we can find acoustic differences between individuals. And we found that duration or frequency parameters changes. For instance, you can have a much higher pitch voice in mares than in geldings, which are also higher pitched than stallions. But it also depends on the social status of the animal, because dominant stallions have a much lower pitch voice than subordinate stallions. Then finding these acoustic differences doesn't guarantee that the animals will use it. So we have conducted a playback experiment and we played the winning calls of three social categories of horses, the familiar neighbors and familiar strangers and group members. And we found that our horses, when hearing these three voices, could discriminate the social category of the color and they adapted their behavior response in accordance to the color, they would be more attracted and willing to, to go towards the loudspeaker for familiar animals, but they would be very vigilant and careful when hearing unfamiliar animals. So that gives us the conclusion that we found acoustic differences between individuals, and these acoustic differences can be used by the animals and decoded by animals. So if a horse has developed different calls for social encounters, perhaps the divergence in their societies has caused a divergence in their noises. We had one listener, Siobhan in Ireland, who wrote in to tell us about the breeding programme in Russia to domesticate silver foxes. One of the notable developments was that they began to bark, they began to whine, and they developed a more diverse range of vocal communication. So if we domesticate horses and donkeys on the basis of their ability to communicate just a bit with us, perhaps that's caused a change in their voices too. If anyone out there has cleaned out a stable, they'll know all about the smell of urine. But what if it smells of your last meal? Hello, my name is Connor Rouse, uh, and I'm calling to ask, why does eating sugar puffs make your wee smell funny? Let us know your thoughts by emailing chris at thenakedscientists.com or write your answers on the forum, and that's at thenakedscientists.com forward slash forum. 
Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast and supported by the EPSRC, the Wellcome Trust and UK Fast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.